Hi there. This is Dr. Robert Sivas, the Cobb Addiction Doc. Today, we are going to discuss what may appear to be a very controversial topic, but I think it's critically important that everybody has perspective, not from your own position, but from the position of those people considering weight loss surgery. And it's weight loss surgery that is the title of today's topic. This, there's going to be a series of short episodes discussing various aspects of weight loss surgery. But today, we're going to talk about who, why, and what is the value. One of the interesting, ironic paradigms for me, and I'm a bariatric surgeon, I'm a weight loss surgeon who became very disillusioned with the long-term outcomes of surgery. We are fantastic. We are the best in the whole wide world at getting people to lose weight. And I'm not just talking about me personally, I'm not that arrogant. Uh, but as a, as a specialty, bariatric surgeons force people not to be able to eat for a while. So we are better than any diet, any other form of weight loss, because we can enforce comfortable starvation for a protracted period of time. We can enforce caloric reduction. So weight loss is best done through surgery. Most effective, sharpest decline. I'm not saying that that is necessarily the best way for everyone to go, but it's the most effective, the most dramatic, the most effective. So bariatric surgeons, weight loss surgeons like myself, are the best in the world at forcing people to lose weight. But because we're so darn effective, the majority of us, of all the people that work in the obesity space, have the least understanding of obesity. One of the critical things that I believe every person should understand is the difference between weight loss and obesity. And the way I look at it is weight loss is about caloric reduction in pounds by any method. It's to go from a certain weight down to a lower weight. And there is no real goal, but that's a topic for another day. Obesity is not about weight. It's about the behavior that caused you to become fat. And no surgery, no medication, nothing that I or the best doctor in the world can do to you can treat your obesity. You see, the only person in the trenches to change your behavior is you yourself. We can give you the education, we can give you the tools, we can give you the insight, the introspection, we can hold your hand, but we cannot get you to change the, the behavior. And ultimately, no matter who you are, no matter who you are, it is that transformation of obesity behavior, the cause of your obesity, that has to happen if you are going to lose the weight and keep it off. And here's what I say to all the critics, and the critics come from two areas. The first group of critics are the people that have never had a weight problem, they've never been fat, they've been able to maintain their weight. They can't comprehend what it's like to be a fat person and how difficult the struggle is. I'm a fat person. I always have been and always will be. Not necessarily here, but always here. I understand. I battle with it every single day. And while I struggle, and it's an immense struggle, I'm never going to quit. So absolutely, we have to deal with obesity, the behavioral component. But at the same time, if you're fat, if you're morbidly obese, if you're overweight, you really want to lose that weight. And that's the caloric part. You can do it with a diet. In fact, any calorie-restricting diet will cause transient weight loss. But if you don't understand and address the cause, the behavior, you're going to gain that weight back, right back. And every patient that ever walks into my office is already an expert at failing weight loss programs. Often surgery, they've had that before. They've lost the weight and they've regained it. So the focus of my practice is to talk about the behavioral side and the carbohydrate addiction side of my practice that you see in all the episodes before this one is all about the behavior. But ultimately, there are people that wrestle with a behavioral change and they keep tripping over their own feet. They do well for a while, they stumble. Nobody, nobody breaks an addiction the first time. Nobody quits smoking the first time. And nobody loses weight and keeps it off the first time. We struggle, we try, we learn, we do better, we do better. We never quit, we keep doing it, and eventually it works. But somewhere along the line, some people need help. And it's the people that need help to do what they're doing 
that are the people that I put on my surgical hat and help them with medications, with devices, with surgery. Not to keep the weight off, but to lose the weight. And during that time, we want those patients to change their behavior, to modify that behavior, not to modify it, but to break habits and create new ones so that they can keep the weight that they've lost off. That is the true goal of bariatric surgery. The problem is the majority of people that do what I do surgically, the bariatric surgeons, are so good at weight loss, they have no conceptual understanding of obesity. And that's the tragedy. And it's so frustrating to listen to my surgical colleagues talk about bigger and bigger and more influential and more dangerous and more dramatic surgeries to get people to lose weight more quickly when they don't understand obesity. And those patients will do one of two things. They'll either lose, they will lose the weight. They'll always lose the weight. The majority of them will regain the weight. But by the time they've regained the weight five to 10 years down the road, their surgery is long gone. The surgeon's long moved, over, moved off. And if they do account that, uh, uh, expect accountability from that surgery, the surgeon blames the patient, never the operation. But it's incumbent upon the surgeon to, as much as they explain the surgery and prepare the patient for the surgery, to also help him to understand obesity and treat the obesity first. And perhaps if they, the patient can effectively treat the obesity, they don't need the surgery. My best patients are the ones that come in for surgery. We talk about the obesity management. We talk about the addiction side. They go down that road and they keep kicking the surgical ball down the field. That's kind of my story. I got to within one week of bariatric surgery as a 300 pounder, but because I followed some of the, the addiction rules myself and I understood the addiction side, I'd lost 60 pounds by the time I got to that week before my surgery. And I said, you know what, let's delay the surgery. I got to pay out of pocket. It was a lot of money, $17,500 20 years ago. And I said, let me kick this ball down the field. And as long as I'm doing well, I'll postpone. And by the end of nine months, I'd lost 90 pounds. And for the most part, with a few relapses, because of the behavioral change that I'm continuously struggling with and never quitting doing, I've been able to keep 90 pounds off plus minus. And I'm just coming off a big relapse now, but doing pretty darn well. And I'm going to have my surgery. I'm still going to have my surgery, but perhaps only after I'm dead of old age. In other words, that's always at the back, at the back of my head. It's always something that is there for me should I screw up and gain the weight back. But it's incentive not to. And that's the ideal patient. But I recognize that only 4% of people are able to do that effectively. And for the rest, while they may struggle, there is the option to give them a tool that helps them along the journey. Surgery is not an option other than what you're doing. It's a tool to help what you're doing be better. It is ludicrous to think of someone who's trying to kick the habit of heroin addiction and not use Symboxone or Methadone. Those are tools to help you get off the heroin. It is ludicrous to think that someone who's tried and failed to quit smoking five or six times is not a person who could benefit from a nicotine patch or Chantix uh, or some other form of nicotine supplement, maybe even vaping, to help them to transition off. But ultimately, the goal, the goal is to change the behavior. In exactly the same way, bariatric surgery is not an endpoint. It's a tool to help people to lose weight when they're struggling with the behavior. But ultimately, it's a partnership. The surgery loses the weight. It's caloric reduction for a while, one to two years. And the behavioral change has to be progressive forever. And if you partner with your patients, you educate them and you do this, you have the best outcome. But the key thing to understand is bariatric surgery is just like a diet. It is never forever. With bariatric surgery, with weight loss surgery, you lose a tremendous amount of weight in one to two years. And after that, the surgery is no longer effective at getting you to lose that weight unless You've addressed the behavior that caused the obesity to come on. We're too smart. We can work our way around the surgery. We defeat the purpose of the surgery, and the surgery is no longer as effective. And then you either gain the weight, or what's worse, is because of the surgery, you're not able to eat, eat adequate amounts of calories, so you stay skinny, but 100% of people who are in a protracted period of, of comfortable starvation become malnourished. And I never want my patients to get malnourished. So as we go through the next few episodes, I'm going to take on each type of surgery that we do. 
with this common understanding that it has to be a partnership. Weight loss and obesity management, calories and behavior. And if you team up with your surgery, you will be healthy for the rest of your life. That's what we're looking for. One further comment, and this is a critical change in thinking. Very, 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 very few people ever died because they were fat. Obesity does not kill people. Nobody falls over and dies because they couldn't get up. Very few people probably do that. Obesity doesn't kill people. Okay? The only two bad things that obesity really does directly is it hurts your weight-bearing joints, your spine, your hips, your knees, your ankles, just by the sheer gravitational force of that extra excess weight. So it has orthopedic uh, implications. And the second thing is that most fat people don't look so good in a thong. What I mean by that is your look, your social aspect, you can't cross your legs, you can't do a whole bunch of different things. Psychologically, you slice away bits of your life, the fatter you become. But obesity is primarily a psychological and a social outcome and an orthopedic outcome. All the other diseases, the diabetes, the metabolic syndrome, the hypertension, all of those diseases do not come from the excess weight. They come from the same substance that cause you to become fat exclusively chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption causes obesity and metabolic disease. You cannot be fat and healthy. And if you are fat, you are also unhealthy unless you've addressed, begun to address the cause, which is your chronic consumption of carbohydrates as a substance that you use to manage your emotional needs. There's lots more other episodes on the addiction side, and I'd urge you before you think about surgery to go back and look at some of my early carbohydrate addiction work. Part of these podcasts, part of this channel, the Carb Addiction Channel. But unless you're prepared to kill your best friend, don't have surgery. You're wasting your time. You, it's dangerous. And your best friend is not your wife, your husband, some guy, some girl. It is sugar and starch. And unless you're willing to sever that relationship first and then have surgery to help to keep that relationship dead, don't have surgery because you don't want to kill carbohydrates. Oprah cannot eat bread and expect Weight Watchers to keep her thin. Oprah's obese because she hasn't dealt with her carbohydrate consumption despite how many calories she reduces on Weight Watchers. And Weight Watchers and obesity surgery fail as much as any other program of caloric reduction fails long term because you haven't owned and addressed the addiction to carbohydrates, the obesity behavior. If Oprah could only understand that, we'd have a champion for our cause. But she's protected by Weight Watchers from ever understanding the cause of her obesity. Just like a lot of surgeons protect their patients with weight loss surgery from understanding and changing why they became fat in the first place. Please, please, please understand your obesity before you ever contemplate surgery. And if you do think about surgery, use it to make your obesity transformation more successful, not in lieu of. If you want more information, if you want to join our practice, if you want to become one of our patients, either with surgery, after you've had surgery, or to prevent surgery, text me to 561-517-0642. If you don't understand the obesity side, if you want to learn more about surgery, give us a text. We can do it telephonically, virtually, or in the office in Florida. Thank you.